So let's think about the logic for adding a user. So we're going to have some method, which we're going to call create user. And we're going to pass in a user, right? This would just be basically the name of the user. So one thing that we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to take this user and we're going to want to add an ID to the user. So the way that we could end up doing this is that first of all, we're going to want to get the, um, uh, we're going to want to read the users to get the max ID and end up incrementing it by one. So one thing that we could end up doing here is we could say, hey, look, we want to re read this JSON data. This is going to end up getting us our users actually even to be even simpler. We could say we're going to call uh, get users, which is right here. And what we'll do when we get our users, we're going to have users. And what we'll end up doing here is, well, let's find the max ID and we'll say um, max ID is going to be equal users and we're going to reduce. And this is going to be the max value that we have. And a user will start out at zero. We'll return our accumulator and we'll just ask the question if user.id is greater than the accumulator, then we'll say the accumulator equals the user ID. And then what we could end up doing over here is that after we end up doing this, we could now specify, uh, hey, the ID of the user is going to be whatever the max is plus one. And for now, let's just console log the user. And this is something that we're going to want to export. So we'll also en end up exporting create user. And let's just go back to our server. Just to test it out, we're going to say db create user just to call it. And let's take a look, see what we have here. Um, max is not defined. So let's just go over here. Take a quick look. Max ID, sorry. Okay. Um, cannot sub property of ID if undefined. That's true. My mistake. So let's say we wanted to add a new user. And this is going to be Larry. Now we'll have Larry with an ID of two. We haven't saved him at all. But what we could end up doing is in our data layer, we could go in here. Now we've got our user, and what we could end up doing is let's actually have some method, which is going to be um, write JSON. And in this case, what we could do here, um, this gets to be maybe a little bit messy here, but one of the things we could end up doing is we could end up returning, and we'll say write JSON. And what we'll do here is we'll take our users We'll push this new user here. We're going to call write JSON for the users. And we'll go over here and let's just see what this ends up buying us here. So right now, write JSON doesn't exist. If we went to write to see this, we'd see it doesn't exist. Read JSON and write JSON are kind of similar. In fact, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I don't need all of this, but write JSON. is going to take some data. We'll end up saving it to the same file. And since it's going to take some data, we're going to want to parse this data, JSON, excuse me, not parse, but stringify, because we want it to be a string. And this is going to be our users that we're going to end up creating here. Here is our promise that we return here. And we'll just go over here and say, hey, look, if there's an error, we are going to reject with the error. If there's not an error. We're going to end up resolving it. There's really nothing to resolve it to. We just want to see that we were able to uh, write the file with these users. And if we go back over here, we'll end up getting, let's just take a quick look. So we've got read JSON. And here, I made a little bit of a mistake. This is not read file. This is write file. 
and I'm still getting the same message. Let's take a quick look. So here I see I made a mistake. I need to close this off. So I've got my right JSON. Again, this is functioning as my data layer. The problem that I'm going to run into is that it's going to keep on adding users here. And the reason why this is happening, and we can see it here if we end up opening up our users.json, is that what's going to happen is that uh, NodeBond will restart our server every time this ends up happening. So let's actually just go over here. I'm just going to start this out as an empty array. And when I end up starting my program, I'm going to say NodeBond. I want you to run server.js, but by the way, don't restart. Don't restart for users.json. In which case, I'm just going to have one user here in my application that's going to be Larry. Of course, if my app restarts, I'll get two Larrys because it's going to add one every time. But that's something that we could go and fix. The bottom line is that now we have a little bit more of a data layer based on the fact that we are, we have the ability to end up creating a user and to end up writing the file. And probably the last thing that we want to do here is if we're going to end up going to create a user, one of the things that we want to do is once we're successful writing this, we want to end up sending back this user that ended up getting created. So we found the max ID, we've pushed it to the file, we've ended up writing the user. And now if I go back to my server here, what I'm going to do is just go over here and use this as a promise. Eventually I'll end up wiping these out, but what this should just show me is that not only was I able to create the user, but I could see this user that ended up getting created, and I'll see that every time this runs it's just going to be Larry again, but it's going to be a new ID. So we've got this nice data layer it's not quite a CRUD data layer. We could end up reading and we could end up creating, but it's a start. Uh, again, basically giving us the ability to write data by using this uh, file that we have here.